Hey guys, today we're going to discuss power plays, PKs, and delays during the run of play. First example here is what to do on a delay. Uh, 89 is tripping in the offensive zone, sees that the call is being made, and makes the correct play. Now he has two options, a shot on net or to move back for the delay. The correct move here is to move back for the delay and get a better shot on net. Every time we should set back up behind our own net on a delay. This way we can get the right personnel out there and start with the power play line plus one. Right there. Quail! Right. Westchester now has their full power play plus one more player in front of the net. Here, Westchester creates a two-man game between the two players there, creating a mini two-on-one up top looking for a one-timer. We'll let it roll from here. 19 sees that they're outnumbered here, 3-2, to two, so he calls for the puck back out at top and resets the play to be moved to the other side of the rink. Westchester resets and sets a two-man game up on the other side of the rink since Newman had to recover. Now set up in the bottom right-hand corner of the rink, in which they all reset. And now another pass is made to the front, as another two-on-one is made between the man in front of the slot and in front of the net. Easy goal. Newman and Westchester at this point both have their special team set up. Westchester makes a point not to allow the two-man game to happen by supporting their low guy by bringing the high guy down a little bit further and keeping after the sticks. The penalty killer has two options, either to dump it around the boards or to take back for more of a delay and to kill off time. He then makes a smart play to go up the boards with it, with his offenseman already leaving the zone to create a two-on-one opportunity. Although the chance is blown, yeah, Mike. Yeah, Mike. Two, the two, intent two, is there two. to create an opportunity for the penalty killers to score a shorthanded goal. Yeah. 71 makes an awful decision to turn back with the puck to try and regroup. Here, there's two back checkers and you have a three-on-two going in. What I would like our team to do is to move into the high slot with the puck. So now you have a triangle against the two-man and you make a two-man game, once again, between the low guy and the high guy. And then you have the guy on the outside, so you can create two-on-ones with either of the two players, with the player in the high slot and a player on the low boards. Here's a great play by the high PKer to cut off the backdoor pass by collapsing. There you go, good stick! Here, 19 has two decisions, either to delay again, or to throw it up the boards. Here he makes the wrong decision by wrapping it around the boards, which leads to a turnover. In that case, we read a backhand dump out of the zone so we can reset in the PK. Here the high guy goes down to one knee again, cutting off the backdoor pass, forcing the player to shoot, which is good for our goalies because they can make the first save every time. Remember, in every opportunity we have a PK, always kill the penalty first. Chester sets up in a box and creates the two-man game along the right boards. They now establish themselves in an elongated diamond with the left guy chopping lower to try to get a one-timer. Pass was botched, so they shift from an umbrella to a box and then bring it back down low to the man out on the right to reset the play. The eventual goal of this play is to get 19 the shot. The puck is moved down low, they reset, puck comes out top, moves to the left, and now the backdoor play is open as Newman is sent chasing. The pass is made and it's tipped in front, hops into the net, and Westchester gets away with the goal. They also sell it. 
As you see them run their own version of the Pittsburgh, the puck starts from behind the net, but the goal is to get it over to 19, to move the puck out and across, and then back diagonally across the scrambling triangle to make a backdoor goal. Hopefully this helps, and I'll talk to you guys later.